A trying and questioning was my every move, and verily, one must also learn to answer such questioning. That, however, is my taste. Not good, not bad, but my taste, of which I am no longer ashamed, and which I have no wish to hide. This is my way, where is yours? Thus I answered those who asked me, The way, for the way, that does not exist. Thus spake Zarathustra. In this video essay, we will be discussing who Nietzsche was as a person, insofar as Zarathustra is representative of the author, and how he compares to the Ubermensch, or Overman, he teaches. We will look at who or what the Overman was to be, and how we are related to him, and from here look at the stated purpose of this book in the eyes of the author. We will also look at how this book with its many passages on a great many topics, serves as examples of which to abstract a system of scaffolding for the purpose of developing your own guide, your own way to the end that is the overman. Friedrich Nietzsche was a man who could write profoundly about a great many things and thought very highly of his own ability to write and think in a profound way. From his book Twilight of the Idols, he proclaimed his ambition and by extension his ability to write more in a paragraph than most people could write in a book, and even what others did not say in a book. Quote, My ambition is to say in ten sentences what everyone else says in a book, what everyone else does not say in a book. End quote. While Nietzsche did in fact write many books, he does display his incredible ability to say a great many things in only a few words, and would seemingly be justified in his reliance on his own profundity. Even with his elevated status in his own mind, however, he did not see himself as someone who could become the overman. In the first part of Thus Spake Zarathustra, he uses the analogy of a heavy raindrop in comparison to a lightning strike. Quote, I love all those who are like heavy drops falling individually from the dark cloud that hangs over humanity. They herald the coming of the lightning, and as heralds they perish. Behold, I am a herald of the lightning and a heavy drop from the cloud. But this lightning is called Overman. End quote. Even in his justifiably elevated ego, he could not see himself as the Overman that he teaches. This Overman was someone who, in Nietzsche's words, could create their own value and not be limited to the guiding morality of the times. Not only would he have been freed from these fetters of stifling dogmatic morality, of good and evil, but was capable of actually being free from the necessity of systems of morality as such. Even the value that the overman could create for himself were values to which he would by his own nature overcome. The overman was not to be seen as a static entity, as someone who found stability in his enlightenment. Instead, his nature was one that continually becomes that which is beyond itself. By contrast, Nietzsche believed that those who he wrote this book to were incapable of becoming overmen themselves, and that the mission of those who were not capable of creating their own values was to act as a bridge to the overman. Quote, Mankind is a rope fastened between animal and overman, a rope over an abyss, a dangerous crossing, a dangerous on the way, a dangerous looking back, a dangerous shuddering and standing still. What is great about human beings is that they are a bridge and not a purpose. End quote. Nietzsche very much loved mankind, and his aim was to bring light and wisdom as he saw it to men through his love for the purpose of facilitating the movement of mankind towards the overman. Nietzsche's stated purpose in this book is to teach man how to act as this bridge to the overman. However, he makes an early distinction on what kind of man he wishes to teach, or more precisely what kind of man would actually learn from him and would take well to being his companion. During Zarathustra's prologue, after he had come across a town and consoled a man who was dying with his wisdom, he carried the corpse of this man who took to his teaching for some time. After he slept, he awoke in a rush as someone who had seen a new truth. Quote, It dawned on me, I need companions and living ones, not dead companions and corpses that I carry with me wherever I want. Instead, I need living companions who follow me because they want to follow themselves wherever I want. It dawned on me, let Zarathustra speak not to the people, but instead to companions. Zarathustra should not become the shepherd and dog of a herd, to lure many away from the herd, for that I came. The people and herd shall be angry with me. Zarathustra wants to be called a robber by shepherds. End quote. 
This sentiment to have companions who are alive creates a tension that is evident throughout the book. Zarathustra aims to teach well so that man will learn, however he despises any who follow like sheep or believers. In the second part, Zarathustra was addressing his disciple on this very idea. Quote, Do you believe now that he speaks the truth here? Why do you believe that? The disciple answered, I believe in Zarathustra. But Zarathustra shook his head. Faith does not make me blessed, he said, especially not faith in me. The rest of this book acts as a display of examples to those who heeded the message to be companions and not followers. What Zarathustra gives us in his observations of his journey is a scaffolding, a scaffolding designed to help build up your own way to act towards the overman. This is the distinction between a Nietzschean philosophy and others, that the lessons and insights that you can garner from his work are not universal. What Zarathustra speaks to me will not be what he speaks to you. This is to say that his philosophy is not to be taught or understood on any level beyond the individual, and if any lesson can be scaled up to more than he who is earnestly and genuinely reading, that lesson would prove false in the final analysis. For this reason, my insights that I gain from this book I do not wish to share, because to try and teach you what I learned would be disloyal to the process in which I learned them. Instead, I would recommend that any who wish to gain value from this book would approach it as though it has something to learn, but not something that is being told to you.